You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon, as you can see, I'm back at you with another episode of No More Future, and I have in my company Sedge. That's me. I so, think. <laughs> I think I think as well. <laughs> so we're just gonna pick back up where we left off. Uh, Sedge, are you gonna be voicing anyone today? Yep. All right, perfect. Just uh, let me know, or just talk before I do. <laughs> All righty, here we go, guys. Sit back and enjoy the video. All right, start. The game. There we go. All right. Hopefully, as you head towards the labs, you'll find something to distract you from all these problems you seem to be running into as of late. Ooh, that's pretty. Ooh, I could see that scene being right out of an indie game. I remember walking through these streets a few days ago alongside Mary and some of her staff, and a mob of relentless journalists gawking from a fair distance away. You never got a chance to appreciate the city that day for obvious reasons. Now that you're almost by yourself, however, you can finally spend some time to take in the wondrous sights. New Relay is a city of technology and innovation, and it shows. Every house and apartment complex is compact and efficient in its design, while also showing some modicum of personality. There are exotic gardens on every lawn and solar panels on every roof. That's about where the similarities between the different properties end. Big, splashy swimming pools, meticulously crafted steel gazebos, multi-purpose sports fields. Everywhere you look, there's something crazy to feast your eyes upon. As if the houses were competing with one another to come up with the coolest design or the most unique gimmick. It's almost like someone built an amusement park right in these people's neighborhoods. A very empty amusement park right now, mind you, but you have a feeling that it'll liven up soon enough. And the inner city promises even crazier discoveries to be made, with its tall skyscrapers looming on the horizon, their top floor is so high up that they can peek beyond the clouds. You only have faint memories of the shopping districts from back when you were little, but you can only imagine that they're even more bright, colorful, and loud than you recall. It's been almost 20 years, after all, and the cities change, and cities change over time, New Relay first and foremost. Those snacks that you, brought, that you bought earlier at the train station have definitely made your trip so far a lot more interesting. Unsurprisingly, the crackers and drink that you bought at the vending machine were borderline inedible, not just simultaneously, but on their own as well. Not even deactivating your pain receptors could have protected you from the horror you unleashed upon yourself. It's still a little ways to go before you're fully done with those damnable snacks. You could just throw them away right now, you reason. But then you'd feel guilty over wasting Pandora's money for nothing, so you ultimately decide to face your awful decisions head on and finish what you've started. At the very least, the sights of the city so far have managed to distract you from the taste of those crackers pretty well. Over time, the dreadful flavor disappears from your taste buds, allowing you to focus once again on enjoying your surroundings. But touring this place isn't the main reason you're here. You still need to get that checkup at Pandora, so that's all you decide to think about for the time being. You'll have time to look around after you're done. You don't need a GPS or even simple directions to reach your destination. You can see it quite clearly on the horizon, towering above the city below the... below and even... A, and even all over the other skyscrapers nearby. Even a child would be able to find Pandora's HQ, so distinctive their main building is. It's unlikely they'd know about it in the first place, of course, but it's still there for the few like you who now cannot live without them. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be enough to stop Arthur from trying to be of help. Your map history shows you've never been to New Relay before. Would you like a general overview of the city and its features? I've been here before. I spent at least 10 days cooped up at the labs while the scientists ran their tests, and I just sort of tried to figure myself out. You just weren't there with me back then. Fortunately, I might add. Not to mention the few times I visited with my parents back when I was a child. Which I don't fully remember, but that's beside the point. Would you still like to read the Wikipedia article on it? It's the best way to get up to speed of all the meaningless trivia you'd never learn in your life otherwise. I would actually prefer if you kept quiet for a minute, thank you. Now that's not very nice. By the way, you're supposed to turn left, right about. Now. Without a second thought, surprised as you are, you try to follow the navigator's instructions to the letter. And barely manage to avoid greeting a nearby tree with your forehead. Almost got you that time. Hilarious. It appears you've learned nothing from the last few days with this mistake of science. A testament to your humanity, perhaps. Or to your stupidity. And then you wonder why I'm having the lab coats over at Pandora remove you for good. 
your inability to handle a friendly AI cracking a few jokes at your expense does seem worthy of medical attention. Yes. I'd probably be able to handle it a bit better if you didn't do it all the time. Every single day. It's only been three days. Don't be a drama queen. Three days, huh? Felt like three years. Now shut up already. I need to concentrate. But I have so many more jokes I'd like to attempt. The only thing you're trying to attempt on is my life. You sigh once again as you question your decision to continue living for what must have been the eleventh time by now. I really should have paid more attention when Mary explained how you worked to me the other day. Knowing my luck, she probably mentioned how to turn you off and I didn't listen. And again, she, she was also the one who insisted on installing you in the first place, so it's not entirely my fault. Denying responsibility yet again, I see. Smart move. Speaking of smart moves, not getting hit right about now, who'd definitely be wise. What are you talk- It comes at you so fast, you almost don't see it. You only notice what is happening as the panther kid driving his hoverboard down the lane nearly dodges you just in time to avoid a gnarly collision. You don't even have time to figure out the model or the design of the board before the teen turns a corner and disappears further into the urban maze, swiftly headed who knows where. If you still had a heart, you imagine it'd be going crazy right about now. Did, did that really just happen? Is that, is that a rhetorical question, or...? Never mind. It's not really the hoverboard sight that caught you off guard. Technology that relies on magnetic or fuel-reliant levitation is quite common these days, and hoverboards are, by themselves, nothing new. In recent times, they've evolved from a luxury item that only the wealthiest could afford to a utility item for those who don't quite have the money to purchase a car. Nevertheless, the sight is still quite shocking to you. Kids using hoverboards to go to school. It's only been five years or so since you could have been in that panther, panther shoes, but the times have still changed drastically since. It's certainly not the kind of gift your mother would have, would have ever given you for your birthday, that's for sure. Not even if she could afford it. Maybe that's why you always found hoverboards so fascinating. Because for you, they were always just out of reach. Even so, that was pretty fast. Compared to all the boards I've seen, that was at least twice, if not thrice as quick. Are you not worried for that kid's safety? He could have turned you into Panther Goo had he collided with you, you heartless fiend. Like you have a heart to speak of. Anyway, I'm sure he'll be fine. If his parents gave him a hoverboard at his age, that probably means he knows what he's doing. I'd attack several massive holes in your reasoning. Would you like me to point them out to you in meticulous detail? God damn it, I really fucking... Number one, you're assuming his parents are both responsible, mature, and have their mental faculties operating at 100% efficiency. As latest studies show... You try to ignore the mocking voice inside your head as you keep as you kept trekking towards Pandora Laboratories. You speed up your pace as much as you can, as you can afford to, hoping to cut the time needed to get there as much as you can. You pray to whatever god is out there, you know, you won't bump into yet more people while in this ridiculous state. You finally reach your destination, the most tall, imposing, and unique skyscraper this side of the continent. So massive is, you only now realize how small and insignificant you are by comparison. Truth be told, at least half of the imposing part is thanks to that big circular logo that watches over the equally impressive glass doors at the entrance. You always thought that the robotic-looking ped Pandora chose as their symbol looked particularly creepy, with almost demonic-looking eyes that seemed to stare right through you. However, now that you're seeing it in this red, early morning light, you realize that creepy doesn't even begin to describe it. You were definitely desperate to even consider accepting help from a company with such a terrifying image. Sometimes I wonder if they even have a marketing team. We do, and I can confirm that it is very aggressive. Right, of course it is. Other than the logo, the other eye-catching feature about the iconic building is that huge glass sphere at the top, which shines from within almost like a second moon. What's up with that thing, by the way? I always wanted to know what was up there. That information is confidential. Oh, really? I didn't think it... Hold on, is it, though? Perhaps not. Oh, come on, be useful for once in a while and tell me what I want to know. What's the point? You're going to ask whoever you're going to replace me with anyway. Oh, someone getting jealous, huh? Maybe remorseful over how much of a prick he's been in the last few days? Besides, 
I can think of a wait line to accompany the description you asked for. So that's why. Figures. You only now realize how ridiculous you must look right now. The android seemingly entertaining a whole conversation, even getting angry with none other than itself. You hope that there are no journalists hiding in the green bushes nearby, or Mary might never let you live this down. For some reason, you always had a knack for chatting with yourself whenever you were alone. It seems that habit has followed you even past your transition. You briefly wonder whether it's hard-coded into you, much like the rest of your personality, but without any knowledge, but without any knowledge about how the transition actually works, you can't say for sure. Regardless, you feel like you've spent enough time discussing with the pesky, with that pesky AI about this place. It's about time you finally got rid of him, once and for all. Well, here goes nothing. Ooh, pretty. The morning passes uneventfully, devoid of anything to do but answer nonsensical questions and complex and com and complete unexciting exams. Through it all, Arthur remains as helpful as ever, making you consider the possibility of jumping out the nearest window more than once. You probably would have done it too, had the AI not warned the nearby researchers of your plans every time you considered it. The early afternoon is yet more of the same, much to your dismay. At this rate, you feel like the I feel like you might be stuck here forever with him. Fortunately, someone does come to finally relieve you of your fa faulty assistant eventually. It still takes a while to remove him safely, but after a while... There we go. How do you feel? New sprites for Mary. Yes, that looks nice. Uh, what is she, anyway? What's her species? Siamese cat. Oh, okay. I'm, oh, yeah. I remember it's you telling me that now. You hesitantly wait for a sarcastic quip, an awful joke, a tasteless remark, but the only sound you hear is the beeps and boops of the PC as it runs its diagnostics on you. Good. Great, even. Thanks for the help, Dr. Shelley. Oh, please. I told you where to call me Mary. I don't care for formalities or hierarchies in the slightest, and neither should you. The familiar sight of Dr. Shelley has about the same impact on you as a cold bottle of water after a tough workout, or the smell of a warm soup on a winter night. You never could have imagined how much you'd, you'd come to rely on her since beginning this strange journey, both physically and emotionally. Still, you've had to fully figure her out. On one hand, she's always been sympathetic to your plight and eager to help you however she could. On the other, she's definitely got a few screws loose in her brain, which you can almost physically see from time to time. Regardless, you can't deny that she's remarkably helpful. When you told her about the issues you've been having with Arthur, she almost immediately offered to take him off of you, free of charge, and on the next day to boot. Regrettably, the rest of her team just had to have their way with you before you could come to your rescue, before she could come to your rescue. Here, take a look at this. The lady suddenly presents her open palm to you. In it lays what looks like an old-fashioned USB, about as long and as wide as your index finger. Bright red lines shine across its length, running up and down rhythmically like waves in the sea. You immediately recognize it. It's what she brought with her to your place, as she personally delivered you back to your normal life a few days earlier. Well, normal isn't quite right anymore, but that's beyond the point. So, that's Arthur? Yep, troublesome as he may be, he's still a state of the art B grade. Can't exactly throw it away, you know. As long as you don't give him to anyone else in his current state. Yeah, <laughs> maybe one day, once he find a way to make it a little less. Irritating? Yeah, that. I'll make sure to send your complaints to the guys over the AI, at the AI department later, so I know exactly what to work on. Can't have our precious synthetics killing themselves a few days after being reborn because of some overpriced, noxious software. Oh, you heard about what happened before. I apologize about that, it was just a joke, I promise. That's okay, no need to apologize to me. If anything, I'm to blame for getting you to try this bad boy on. I recognize my mistakes when I make them. Commendable. You remember plenty of teachers at school with far less integrity than the infinitely more powerful woman before you. Relatives, too. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to put this tiny jerk back in his cage. Should only take a minute. No worries. Go right ahead. The cat walks over to the other side of the room where what can only be described as a wall of drawers and lockers awaits her. Is she just going to shove Arthur inside one of them at random? Or does she have some sort of container for him lying around somewhere? As you ponder that, you take a brief look around the room. You've seen it quite a lot of, quite a lot of times over the course of your stay here, but every time you're here, it feels like there's a new nook or a cranny to explore. 
There's hardly any space to move around thanks to all the desks and chairs lying around, and you can't count all the times you've hit a corner or tripped on something accidentally. Here, give me one moment. Let me, uh... What's the uh, text speed? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna make it a little faster. I'm a fast reader. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's you can't thank Mary... <laughs> you can't thank Mary enough for teaching you how to deactivate your pain receptors at will. Had she not, you'd probably already be back in the hospital due to the pain. There are computers with lit screens everywhere, as well as open folders spread across almost every desk. Their contents are legible even to you. Tidiness and order don't appear to reign in this room, from what you can tell. I'm surprised about all the papers lying around. I thought my family was the last one left using this stuff. That's not very surprising, sadly. People often underestimate just how much more secure physical documents are than digital ones. It's a miracle that the feline can answer your question so easily, given that she's still busy poking her head in those drawers. However, if she doesn't mind answering your bored musings, then neither should you. Really? That's why you use them? Pretty much. All my data is basically gold waiting for a pirate to plunder it. Or a hacker, rather. But to steal those documents, don't first need to enter this room. And that's harder than it sounds, I take it. Just ask security downstairs. Your mood lightened somewhat by the cat's laughter. You return to your mindless observation of your surroundings in search of something interesting to pass the time with. The main source of light in the room is that large lantern in the middle, with its shifting hues that illuminate the place almost perfectly despite its eccentric location and size. You never saw anything like it before in your life. It's actually quite fascinating. You approach it as close as you can, staring right into its mesmerizing glow, trying to figure out its secrets. Hey, Mary, I know I never talked about it before, but what's up with this big tube in the middle of the room? Oh, that? It's a lava lamp. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, oh, what? It's a thing that used to be popular around two centuries ago. Real niche stuff. Around one of the museum a couple decades back. It was pretty and all, but also very small and nowhere near poor enough to light up a whole room. Funny you say that, I've got a lava lamp right next to me. So I got a little creative and adapted the design of that myself. Then I got a couple of bodies from engineering to pitch in, and bam, 22nd century lava land. Interesting. You didn't take her for the sort of person who still visits museums. Then again, though you've only known her for less than a month, you can tell that she's got a massive culture hiding that brain of hers. I see. Does it actually have lava inside? The original lava land employed a special wax mixture surrounded by a translucent liquid. The light bulb underneath would heat up wax, which would then rise to upward in bubble-like shapes. The liquid's purpose to cool down the wax would fall down once its job was complete. There, the bulb warmed up once more, and the cycle continued. Sounds quite ingenious, or so you think. Old technology really is amazing in its ingenuity. So, that's just simple wax, then. I never would have guessed. Oh, that one? Oh, no. That one's filled with real lava. Seriously? You can hear the firefighter siren already blaring in your brain. Did Mary mention at some point whether your body was resistant to volcanic eruptions by chance? Are you, uh, sure that's safe? Of course. About three-eighths of a consulate lamp are pure lava. It's those particles you see flying around the tube in weird shapes and sizes. The rest is special liquid developed by us. You know how oil and water repel each other and cannot mix? It's basically that, but it works with just about every other liquid. It forms vacuums around the lava that don't allow the heat to disperse, allowing you to retain both its shape and its heat. Huh. So that's it. What about the glass, though? The glass is just regular lava-proof glass. And tank-proof, for that matter. Like hell and that stuff spill, out, spill around the place. It cost a fortune to mop it all up. Then I mentioned repairing all the damage it did to my office. Regular. You're not sure the glass in your fa old family's house could even survive getting yelled at. I'm not sure if I'd still want a whole pool of lava just laying around my o around in my office, anti-tank glass or not. Is this really worth all the trouble you went through to install it? Hey, if I want a big-ass lava lamp in the middle of my office, you can bet I'm putting one in there. It looks cool, it calls my nerves, and it baffles everyone who sees and questions my life choices. I see as an absolute win. You take that as a no. Regardless, the glass does seem pretty sturdy. You probably wouldn't even be able to dent it with a fully charged punch. Not like you'd actually try that. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot Mary still still fiddling around with all those drawers from earlier. Half of them are unlocked, 
Her content's out in the open for all to see, and she's still not done from the looks of it. Do you need any help? What? Oh no, don't worry. I'm sure I'll... Aha! There it is. It seems she finally found what she was looking for, inside the umpteenth locker she opened in her frenzy. The proud cat shows you a small black box with her company's insignia on it, with little else to distinguish it aside from that. Carefully, Mary stuffs the small USB inside the protective layer within, then closes the box and sets it down on a nearby desk. She doesn't appear interested in restoring the room as it, as it was as she heads back to you. There we go. Finally got a troublemaker on the lock and key. I'll find some time to deliver him to the AI team later. All that trouble? For a simple box? It's his box, and the guys in the AI division would have torn me a new one if I didn't bring him back inside it. They really don't like disorder, those guys. Maybe she could stand to learn a few things from them, you reason. Either way, you got any idea why it was behaving that way? I know B-grades aren't perfect, but not much beyond that. AIs and how they work aren't really a topic taught at school, beyond the Kronos incident. Ah, uh, yes. Of course they only mentioned that. The line only A-grade. The one that was one step away from wiping out humanity as we know it. Good times. Well, not for this company in particular, but... The realization hits you like lightning in a clear sky. Wait, that's right! Kronos was your invention, wasn't it? The startling memories come flooding back to you all at once. That's what you were researching Pandora for back at school. On the other hand, the Doctor doesn't seem anywhere near as bothered by your discovery as you are. Kronos originated as a Pandora product 40 years ago, yes. One of our finest achievements. Ability to hack into state of the art government networks and take control of two thirds of all the nuclear warheads in the world's side. Luckily, they caught and stopped them just in time. Cries averted, parades in the streets, yada yada yada. After that incident, both governments and people weren't all too happy they were technology anymore. However, they were still intrigued by some of its less deadly features. AIs who could reprogram themselves to solve any tasks were still highly sought after. But the possibility of them becoming smart enough to defy their programming was too dangerous to leave them as is. So you left their abilities intact, but altered their personality. Made them dumber so they couldn't rebel anymore. Her explanation flows as fluently as a river, helping you reach her conclusion before she can even word it herself. You wonder how much dumbing down she had to do to allow you to understand it so quickly. Not dumber. Crazier. Dummy eyes are useless, but crazy ones are magical. If only slightly annoying. I feel like that's somewhat of an understatement. Wait, just a moment. So, you gave me that thing knowing full well it would drive me insane? Oh, finally Mary changes her expression. I've been <clears> looking at it for a while, and it's been stuck there for quite a while. That doesn't seem normal. I'll need to check the script. Oh, okay. But anyway, I give it to you wondering if it would drive you insane. We're still testing your intelligence and reason in reactions, after all, and measuring your stress and sanity thresholds was rather... Educational. She gives you a carefree wink as she struggles with all her might to avoid saying entertaining. You take a long sigh, trying to vent some of your frustrations out that way, but that hardly makes you feel better. What she did doesn't sit well with you at all, for a plethora of reasons. Look, I didn't sign up for... I mean I did, but even so, that doesn't mean you could just go around and plant weird crap in people's brains just to see how they'll react. Technically, you don't have a brain, but um... Mary! I'm not in the mood for jokes or technicalities. What if Arthur got so annoying I decided to throw myself under a train on the way here? The doctor shivers for a moment, unnerved by your hypothetical before returning to her usual nonchalant persona, or trying to at least. Come on, you sacrificed so much for a chance to new life. Are you really going to throw it all under the bus? Or the train, rather, just to spite a crappy eye assistant? Assuming I'm alive in the first place, can't really throw away a life I don't even have. You feel a surge of dark thoughts swarming in your head, a familiar sensation which you've known even before waking up in your synthetic body and never truly got used to. Before your brain of thought can go any further south, however, Mary places her hand on your shoulder, turning to face you with a genuine smile on her face. You are alive in there, Isaac. I know it. Stop trying to convince yourself otherwise. Ugh. Thanks, Mary. Don't mention it. I know my words are nothing more than a temporary band-aids. 
Not so eager to analyze you and perform all these tests. So we can finally kiss all those nasty thoughts goodbye. You feel your metaphorical you feel your metaphorical heart grow lighter at her soft, caring words. Her promise is weak, but it helps you calm down a little bit nonetheless. Anyway, you know, we gotta know that we won't be tempted to make you go insane again. At least for now. Last thing we want is for you to consider suicide for real. No, oh, that's a relief. I think. The cat gives you a couple pats on the back and a smile, trying to cheer you up the only way she knows how. Simply and earnestly. Like she said, it's not a perfect solution, but knowing that she cares does help a, bit, a little bit, if nothing else. By the way, since we're on a topic of helping you out and whatnot, I noticed that Arthur said something about your vision software being bugged or something. Right, you'd almost forgotten about that. Which is strange, because you can see them even now. The weird little bugs flutter around the room like butterflies, moving in tandem with the lava inside that lamp in a beautiful, unpredictable ways. Yeah, don't don't worry about it. I hardly even noticed that. And besides, it's quite pretty to look at. Oh, really? I thought. A little unexpected, but I'm glad you're liking it. You can still see perfectly despite it, right? Yeah, of course. It's nothing major. Just a happy little distraction that's pretty to look at. If it weren't a bug, I'd be tempted to call it a feature. Huh. That'd be funny, you claim. But we're scientists, not clowns. We won't have our mistakes. I suggest we analyze your software try and isolate the ace shoot, but I think you've had enough tests and exams in the past few weeks. Besides, you seem rather happy with it for the time being. Oh, you'd only bring it up now, though. Was it always there, or did it appear just this morning? I don't know. I don't If it was there before, I didn't notice. I see. Either way, it seems harmless for now, so I don't see the point in doing anything about it. Make sure to tell me if it starts to bother you, though. Of course. You have my word. Good. Remember, I'm always here to help you with your problems. The doctor smiles at you as she continues her train of thought. Speaking of, I never did tell you what we're going to do now that we definitely need to put Arthur in the timeout box. Huh. Yeah, we didn't. I totally blanked out on that. Arthur was supposed to help me get acquainted with all these new features I supposedly have access to, wasn't he? Things like internet access and control over suboptimal attachments? Subcutaneous. Under the skin, not under performing. And oh boy, if you think all you can do is shit post social networks without need of a smartphone, well... You say that, but I still have no idea how any of these things work. Arthur managed everything for me back home, but now that I get rid of him, what am I supposed to do? Got any synthetics for dummies ebooks I could download? Well, it's not going to be so simple. Ideally, we start some sort of class with synthetics to learn how to adapt their new bodies and everything. But our logistics are currently too spread out to allow for anything of a sort. Not to mention, we, don't have it, we simply don't have the time or the manpower to pull off something like that. So, what are we going to do? Hire a tutor, of course. A tutor? The feline suddenly turns to face the entrance to the office, a smug grin on her face. Speaking of, Nats, you want to make a dramatic entrance, didn't you? The door to the room slams open on cue with the cats beckoning, sending your heartbeat into a frenzy. A golden-maned canine rushes into the room, her stubby tail poking out from her tight brown trousers. Her snout appears contorted into an emotion vaguely resembling anger for whatever reason. Oh, did and you? This is the new character. Did you want me to voice um, her, or, or is this where uh, you want I to end it? I can voice her if you want. Uh, we can end this now, or we can continue for another ten to fifteen minutes and introduce another character before we stop. Oh yeah, we can end it now. All right, then we can meet this new character the next time. All right, guys, this is Nats. What an adorable character! What an adorable little sprite! I like that. <laughs> she looks so. She doesn't look angry. She looks pouty. <laughs> <laughs> I love pouty. Howdy's adorable. Yep. So, well, can you tell us I... anything about her? Is she a technician, or...? We'll just have to see. Ooh, I like that. Next episode. A woman Next of mystery. <laughs> and... Alright, guys, thank you. Thank you all so much for watching. Sedge, is there anything you wanted to say before we go? Uh... Mm, bunk. Bunk. Okay, alright. That's, That's fine. <laughs> We can continue it next week. Guys, I hope you enjoy everything. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.
Bye.